Well, hello everyone and welcome to Guitar Tales. This is another special bootlegger episode. Chuck Wilson, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And Appreciate Scott, it. Oh, absolutely. And Scott, guitar assist Engel. Hello welcome. again. I'm back. So, I got my, so I got my episode, lucky shark here. Oh, I like your lucky shark. <laughs> so what happened is it's a Friday night that we're taping right now and we're already drinking. We're playing our guitars and we're chatting. And I just said, let me, let me just start recording right now because that's all our show is. It's just people chatting and learning about each other. And on this special episode, um, Bootlegger, one of our sponsors for Guitar Tales, you've got some good stuff going on, Chuck. So why don't you talk to us? Uh, show us what you showed us before we started taping, which is pretty cool. Oh, well, this is just one of, one of the one of my favorite things that uh, there you go. There you go. Uh, I am proud of. You know, you uh, it's it's just a, a six L six tube, and uh, I have these uh, made for me in uh, China, and because uh, you can only get tubes in China, and this is cool. They stamp bootlegger guitar on it, so I just think love it's, it. Uh, I don't know why I'm fascinated with tubes because when I was a kid, like if your TV broke, you know, you would go to the market, you know, you take out the tubes and go to the market and actually test the tubes. The tube tester. Yeah, they had it in yeah. the, uh, the very first pharmacy I ever worked at. And yes, I'm a real pharmacist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and no, I haven't got my COVID shot yet, but I will. Uh, there was a big giant tube testing machine right there. Oh, in the pharmacy, awesome. yeah. And it still worked. So I was, you know, as a musician, I was bringing my tubes there to get tested. Yeah, test the tubes, you know, tubes fascinate me. The more I read about them, the less I understand. Yeah, oh, you know, God, yeah, there's a lot going on in there. As a little kid, my dad had an old Bogan amplifier, and he didn't know it when he bought it, but he had bought a classic, and I mean a stereo um, amplifier when the stereos, and, you know, you had the preamp, the amp, and the tuner separate. But just the idea of tubes, there's something so much warmer, and, and I, I see you have the beautiful bootlegger 1530 behind you. Oh, can you see it? Oh, yeah. 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 And I've got yeah. mine over here, too. Yeah. Look, yeah man. The sound is just gorgeous. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, very proud of it. You know, it's our first, uh, like, my background is I was building amplifiers out of different companies in China, and they were good amplifiers and really good people to deal with. But then I decided I wanted to no longer build guitars and amps from China, and I'm focusing only on my partner in Korea, Ken Kim. So okay. this is the first amp that uh, Ken and I developed, and it, it is a 606 tube-based amp, both 15 and 30 watt, and uh, you're familiar with it. It's got two channels, a clean and a, a dry dirt channel. That's and, very cool uh, that you could change the wattage, because that's, that's, that's huge. I mean, yeah. depending on what venue you're in, um, you know, you need to saturate tubes with power, right? So the idea is that if you don't need it su super loud, you can you can dial down the wattage and then saturate those tubes by cranking up the gain or whatever. Yeah, and, and that's the that beauty of a tube, exactly. And, you know, the gain switch should, do, you know, pot uh, dial should do something, right? I mean, it should, you know, it should change the way the tubes react and the sound mm -hmm. they make. You know, I find right. a lot of amps today, they're almost useless. Uh, yeah, you turn the dial, nothing happens. Yeah. yeah, like a gain is like on this amp. Yeah, you can you can decrease the volume, increase the gain, and, and get really dirty. And then you can, of course, increase the volume all you want and keep increasing the gain and get some real natural tube mm -hmm. distortion. There, there is so much warmth because I, I, I've been cranking this thing, and, and the volume can be crazy if you want it, but it, it, it sounds great at lower volumes too. And I forgot what kind of speaker did you put in here is it an eminence i don't remember no i believe it's i'm i can't see it but it's a celestian <laughs> that's right that's right nice yeah yeah it's um the hot 100 i believe it's called um you know it's it's a good in the middle priced ranged celestian speaker Absolutely. that seems to hold this amp fine it's a 100 watt ceiling right. um you know i don't go cheap and i don't go extravagant because for me a lot of these three or four or five hundred dollar speakers i really can't hear the difference anyway mm -hmm. no and, and i the, as soon as it came in the mail when, when it got besides me being that excited i immediately turned it around and two things made me happy one it's got a big fat magnet on it yep. and and to me like that's the sign of a good speaker i'm not a fan of the tiny little magnets because they say they could do with a little magnet i don't believe that and i love that it's got the old school reverb tank in the back yeah you know the nice. coils 
You know, this <laughs> isn't really? bullshit. Um, no digital synthetic stuff. Synthetic awesome. reverb. This is real signal going through a bunch of springs reverb. And I love so I, yeah. I, and 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 Chuck will probably back me up on this, but the the more you play it, the better it's going to get. Like the tubes are going to wear in a little bit. Speakers going to wear in a little bit. There is sort of a breaking period on tube amps. I always felt. Well, I didn't know that. No question oh, yeah. about it. Right? Oh no, like the one I have in my in the warehouse that I do my. QC videos with when I first turned that on, you know, I mean, I was happy with it, but it was a little bit, a little more harsh. And now it's mellowing right out. Exactly. Yeah, something to do with the tubes warming in and then the speaker breaking in. It, it does mm -hmm. make a difference. And QC is quality control kids, just in case you want to know. Uh, <laughs> well, in Jersey, it's nothing different, right? Fun fact. I, no, I, it's I in know. Jersey, it's cute chicks. I played yeah. a lot. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, I live at the beach. So well we're talking about By the way, Scott, I noticed when we started this segment, you were kind of doing one of these. No, no, it's, it's, all it's, all, figure. it's all fake. You were kind of resting it on the Cam edge Camera guitar. tricks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm covered. I'm, I'm trying to, you know. My, my massiveness is, is covered. Trying to put, it the, is. well, you I, have I, hair. It's barely so. containing you. I, we don't have any hair. At least you got hair. No, that should, Chuck, has a, Chuck has hair to spare. I, yeah. And I guess it's motorcycle riding weather in California. It's still chilly over here in New Jersey. My bike's still under a cover. Yeah. No, it is. It's Yeah, I've been riding a lot. It's uh, great, great sunny weather. For any of the folks that don't know, and if you go to the website, you can see actual video of it. He's got, he's got a beautiful bike. It says bootlegger right on the tank. It's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, super jealous. Really cool. Buddy of mine built that. Took, took a few years. Uh, he's a really trippy dude here in the beach area. Yeah. And uh, we would, you know, we literally, I bought two crash sportsters, pieced them out, you know, went to swap meets, pieced it out mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. really did an old school bobber. It, it's fantastic. Know. Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, people don't have any idea what to make of it because, I mean, it's a great bike. It's a yeah. hard tail sportster, but people look at it and they're like, you know, like, what the hell's that? You know, it's, <laughs> so I love it, you know, because it looks cool and it sounds cool. And and what better advertising than ride around your, on your bike? That's right. It's, it's better than a minivan with like way, a, way better than uh, doing Facebook ads, right, Chuck? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is people pull me over and say, where can I buy the bike? Is it bootlegger guitar that makes them like, uh, oh, no. yeah, yeah, I got you. Actually, right. the, my yeah. buddy won't make that bike again, so no one can buy it. So I'm beautiful. Kinda, it's well, cool. well, a couple of things. Um, yeah. You had a good segue, Mr. Scott. So Facebook, there's now um, a Facebook page you guys have put together. Now, Scott, you, you're you an endorsing artist for bootlegger now, right? I am. Yeah. Yes, he is. And it shows why Scott is, and I'm not, besides my lack of playability. Scott knows to show the headstock in the video on my guitar. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Mine's completely here. By design. I do that. <laughs> We're just bootlegger. Yeah, man. Uh, so yeah, so we, we, set up, we set up a, uh, well, we set up a page uh, to in order to hook a group to it, um, which, without getting super complicated, we, we, we just wanted a page for the bootlegger fans, and hopefully there'll be many, many more to come. So uh, if you search for that, you'll see a, a page for bootlegger fans and artists and, a, and also a group. And the difference is in the page, we'll be posting things about bootlegger, um, different artists and things that we come across and we can post. But the group is really for the people. Anybody can post on there and, and we'll have a look at it and give it the OK. And it goes right up on the website. So um, just so look for the uh, bootlegger fans group on Facebook and, and join that and we'll and we'll certainly get you uh, uh, checked off and on, on board there so you can post some cool stuff about your guitars, your bootlegger. Scott, do us a favor if you can. So you've got the brand new uh, bootlegger Royale. Yes. We did a little promo, but show us a little bit about that guitar and, and maybe just give us a little sense of the sound of that guitar. Well, this thing is, is, is super tricked out. First of all, I love the wood, natural wood binding. Um, super flamed out. Chuck, maple top, right? Yes. Yeah. Correct. Um, and the uh, and rosewood fretboard, uh, not jumbo frets, but that it doesn't slow you down at all. And, and I love the uh, the diamond inlays; They're really gorgeous. And what they've done normally, when you see a guitar like this, you'll see like a uh, uh, a one sided pointy headstock or something like this. Where they went with the traditional three and three, which which I think gives it a little bit of a nostalgic look, but definitely has a modern playability and uh has a floating trim locking tremolo and also my favorite part oh look at that tap switch so 
that taps the uh, humbucker makes it a single. This is a stacked uh, humbucker, which which pretty much stays the same. And then and then the top one also gets tapped. So there's there's, I mean, tons of combinations. You know, especially if you mess around with the tone control, draw the tone down. Um, you know, pull the volume back. So you got a five blade switch here, and so basically you have all kinds of options from super dirty to to metal to blues to jazz and um everybody loves it i mean when i play out with this thing they go first of all it's super unique right i mean it's <laughs> what looks yeah, like this yeah. no, nothing so and then but it's the sound they they go what kind of guitar is that sounds amazing um one guy after the show told me it shits on les paul that the other guitar player you know, my band was playing which caused about three grand and I was like, "Wow, that's a huge endorsement." Because yeah, Jim, Jim is a pure Gibson guy, right? Yes, yeah. Jimmy's Jimmy's got uh, a whole bunch of stuff, but he but that particular day he was playing a really expensive maple top Gibson, and uh, they they were just blown away. So the the, the sh that particular show, because you had to buy tickets for it and stuff, where a lot of our musician friends were there, so all the guitar players were asking me questions. So I had my bootlegger mask on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and talking about, I was like walking advertisement. Um, it's a whole lot. How screwed up is that? Huh? I'm, yeah. I'm not, uh... So I have oh. it plugged into like a dirty channel here. So it, like it picks up any little harmonic and always stays in tune. I mean, you can like. Um, It's all yeah. loose, right? Perfectly in tune. Wow, look at that. I mean, you can, you can literally do whatever you want with this tremolo and it stays in tune. That sounded like a move stint when you did that. <laughs> <laughs> sounded like a little Van Halen. That we, were, we were learning yeah. a new Van Halen song last night. Well, that was the idea of the guitar i mean that was the concept of it right and to make it like a super shredder kind of thing but it's so yeah, much but more that was that. largely from steve stein and right and reno paulson uh the late reno my buddy uh steve with guitar zoom is a you know he's a fast metal you mm -hmm. know proficient guitar player i mean he's phenomenal and uh you know he that's what he does and yeah. so gave him free reign you know to work with us to come up with the guitar and uh there it is. And it's I don't fantastic. think I could have done that. I don't think that's really being an old blues guy, you know, it's a little out of my range. But you can you can get blues tones out of this. And, and no problem. I, I mean, I'm playing Stevie Ray Vaughan and, and yeah. all kinds of stuff oh, like that. It's open just, it's, it's, no, it's not limited at all. I mean, it, it is built for speed and you can get those tones out of it, but it's certainly not limited to yeah. metal or, or hard rock but, you know um, young guys like to play those guitars guys like me were no longer built for speed you know mm -hmm. so you know the young my guys like being built for speed i like you it because my, like, my technique is a little blues and a little rock well, sort of bluesy, mixed in. but the the aesthetic of that guitar because i'm an old school kind of guy and it doesn't have that sort of cheesy look about it it has it's it's some kind of a cross between an old school guitar because look at you know like like around the I'm pointing to my computer here but <laughs> just just the woodwork on it is oh, real it's, subtle it's, it's, it's you beautiful. know and, and it's got an elegance about it yeah which still got to be a bootlegger I mean that was the whole right, point. Right. I mean, that was yeah. my point was you know I don't want another you know whacked out metal looking shredder guitar i mean it right. has to be a, a classy instrument it's just designed you know to be played as you're playing it it's mm -hmm. uh but no i don't consider it limited at all i consider yeah. it to be i gotta ask you what is this is what this guitar right here is what started everything because i bought this thing used mm -hmm. and I, I was on facebook marketplace and some guy Told me, I told you the story. I don't think I did it. Told you on the show that we did together a while ago. Some guy was in trouble with his wife because he had too many guitars and she was making him sell some. So he got so a bit of a bootlegger. What's wrong with that man? Yeah, idiot. I was gonna say he's also still <laughs> married, so he's got to be. What the hell is wrong with that guy? <laughs> so it's better. No, I'm kidding. Sort of. 
Uh, Didn't you meet him um, on a street corner or something? Like, this is gorgeous. And I fell in love with the guitar. I looked you up and I thought, I want to talk to the owner of this company. And that's how we became <laughs> friends. Yeah. Now, this is how old is this one and what model is this? And I look at the heads like it's that's the Hounder. Yes, the Hounder Generation One. Ah. And uh, one of the first three guitars that I designed. The uh, guitar, the name came from uh, Hound Dog Taylor. Right. The six fingered blues jazz, a uh, blues man. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he had a guitar called the Hounder. And I thought, well, it was kind of like an elongated body guitar. Yeah. So, you know, I, I took that cool idea and uh, turned it into uh, that guitar, you know, simplified it, modernized it, and turned it into something that's uh, a classic guitar. It's got such a nice design, the tone with these two P90s. It's got yeah. such a nice tone about it. I love how old school the P90s are on it. Yeah, and, I love these. My newer guitar from you back here, the top pickup is a P90 on it too. And it's yeah. got such a nice, warm kind of sound and it's still got the twang. Yeah. I can do mellow. Yeah. <laughs> That was a little Stevie Ray sound right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the reason for the three by three headstock, mm. that was me. And I looked at, you know, we looked at all the, you know, contemporary is guitars. Yeah. And they're, you know, dagger looking headstocks and everything. Yeah, reverse headstock, which is fine. I mean, I never got the idea, besides maybe the aesthetic look of a, of a, of a reverse headstock on a, on a, guitar that's locked <laughs> right 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 the idea yeah, of, a, a, of a reverse headstock is of course that the that the low string is longer and longer is is better for bass right so it's um, not you, me it's not me one ringy dingy <laughs> me god sorry my phone's on silencio well if you look at the headstock and the reason why i stick with that um being an let me turn this off jeez being the old race car driver that I am, mm -hmm. I like strings that are as straight off the nut to the tuner as possible. Right. right. The more angles that you have, it's a it's a place of failure. Absolutely. Right. Gas lines or oil lines or anything, you know, you don't want kinks. And if you look at a lot of the modern guitars like Gibson, you know, they're they're three by three headstock. There's a mm -hmm. lot of angles with the tuners off the nut, the strings. I should say so we purposely designed that head to be uh, as straight for the strings as possible yeah, absolutely it puts a lot of pressure when you're coming out of here and then you sort of angle it you know yeah it's, oh, it's a it's a weak spot you know right yeah and that makes um, perfect sense yeah so i just you know I, I didn't want to go to something that wouldn't be as functional on that guitar as my three by three headstock so we decided to use it, but then not put binding and everything on it to give it a little bit more of a contemporary look. Because if right. you start putting binding on it, then it brings up that kind of, mm -hmm. you know, Les Paul 1950 era yeah. uh, headstock. Well, uh, um, and, so and we purposely had... painted it to match and uh, made it look- Yeah, you know, it's, a, it's a very, very comfortable. Now, I don't know if you can see how thin it is. Um, yeah, same thing super here. Comfortable. This, this... And I got these little tiny hands, you know, so. Yeah, I'll never this. fight That's Joe a, Lewis. It's got a you nice skinny neck on it too. What, what's interesting, the back of the neck, I don't know if you can see it, it's almost matte. You know, it's not this super highly polished neck and it's got such a nice feel about it. Yeah, that's intentional. I, I figured, yeah. And, and, cool. and the inlay for the border, gorgeous. You know, look, look, how, look at that finish, you know? Mm. If you can look at yourself, it's yeah. a reflection of yourself. And that's definitely, uh, you know, a classic vibe guitar you know yeah. something that's you know uh something that maybe you could have seen in the 60s being built by in some mom and pop shop and that's what i wanted to bring back uh, it worked man now i know from um some of our communications as we were getting ready for the show you have a brand new design you, you want to talk about that tonight yes well we have uh we're working with currently a lot of our designs but our one brand new design like not a not a change from a previous model is the absence 
And if you're familiar with the term or the word abstinence, it's known as the green fairy. It's a, a French liqueur that I first got introduced to in a wild week at Mardi Gras in New Orleans. Nice. And I indeed met the Green Fairy amongst everything else about 25 <laughs> years ago. I hope that backstory is going to be in the description of the guitar. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, it will be when it comes out because that was quite the experience. That's cool. Um, during that time, uh, there were a lot of crazy things you could do. But one of the big things, you go to the better bars and get a shot of abstinence. After three or four of those, you're done. So um, it's, it's considered to be hallucinogenic. I don't know today if they're making because it's it's uh, it's liquor or, you know, it, it's a hard liquor with herbs. And apparently the mixture is supposed to be, they say, hallucinogenic. I just think it's a real powerful proof. Right. <laughs> right so right. anyway, that's why since bootlegger guitar, you know, was bootlegger guitar, I had to come up with something new. And I recalled abstinence and uh, that was it. So the abstinence is a very uh, progressive headless guitar. Hmm. We're going to use uh, the same type hardware as on our spade, which is very successful, our headless guitar, our compact guitar. But this has more of a three-quarter body, um, very progressive, futuristic looking. And then uh, we put a little small head <laughs> where it's headless with the idea you could easily clip on a tuner for the guys that like to uh, clip on a tuner. That's smart. Smart. Yeah, but it does look, I mean, it looked, it fits. And um, I'm very proud of it. You know, it's something, you know, what, what we do is, um, well, actually, I'm doing three videos. I've got two, well, I got one done, one will be out this week, and then the third about how, who and what is bootleg guitar and how I design guitars. So well, just to get a great idea. Yeah. About it, like the absence was designed by my just making lame drawings. I just, would make drawings over and over and over of what I conceived as a cool body for a headless guitar. And um, over a few months, just sending it back to my builders and you know, talking back and forth, we came up with an idea that we then sent to a guitar designer that uh, we know in Japan, hmm. who then took the ideas and turned it into a guitar. Wow. Yeah, and then at that point, engineering takes over and they do everything to make it a musical instrument. So, um, yeah, I'm really pleased with this because it's the first time I've tried to really be a part of a team to build something that's so, I guess I like the word progressive. Yeah, totally sounds unique. That's pretty Yeah, cool. it's going to be cool. And so, uh, is the, the, so the body's going to be bigger than the spade or along the same lines? Oh, no, it's going to be bigger than the spade. It's, Much it's bigger, going. Yeah. This one, not like the spade became popular as kind of a compact travel electric guitar, even though that's not what it is, but guys loved it for it. Right. This is more of a traditional body sized guitar. Mm -hmm. So this, this should not be considered a travel guitar. Okay. That's what uh, I'm trying to That's what I'm getting of, at. Of a full size bodied. Uh, headless um you know i mean i could see it like in jazz bands and mm -hmm. uh, reggae bands and i could see it everywhere because it's, it's just a really unique you know it's not going to be in a beatles copy band but <laughs> yeah a, but a, in modern... <laughs> a lot of guys are looking for unique uh products and unique guitars and that's what i love about bootlegger i mean yeah you got it you got a you got a sizable collection of bootleggers on your wall there obviously but each one of them is, is completely unique yeah, um, yeah. than the other. And, and that's what's like, they're not cookie cutter. No, no they're not. And, and None of it is. And uh, I tell you, it'd be a lot easier to make money just copying something. Yeah. Well, there's plenty of copies out there. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. You know, when you try to uh, introduce new designs, even though they might be a recreation of a previous design, mm -hmm. um, guitar players are predominantly guys. And I think for the most part, you know, you could say that the average buyer of a guitar is most likely not a professional, which mm -hmm. is, you know, that's great. You know, I, yeah. a tremendous amount of buyers that are, are hobbyist guys. And uh, a lot of the hobbyist guys in all my experiences hosting blues jams and stuff, they have a hard time getting out of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if they show up without a Fender or a Gibson, they feel inadequate. Right. So um, when you when you start interjecting something new 
it takes time for uh, people or these guys to get, um, you know, to, to say it rudely, to get their balls up where they feel comfortable enough, yeah. right. you know, to play something other than a Fender Gibson Gretsch PRS or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm a patient guy. And, uh, you know, my philosophy is uh, we're getting better every year. We're selling more guitars every year. So I know I'm doing something right. You know, we had talked about this yesterday. I'm sorry, David, uh, that uh, the new page we put up for the fans and artists, yeah. which we thought would just be, uh, it's, it's, it's owners and artists, the page is called owners and artists. And we thought, you know, maybe we get like a 15, 16, maybe 20 the first day, 200 people yeah. first day. Yeah. And, and he goes, they can't all be guitar players. Like, yeah, but everybody knows a guitar player, right? Yeah. They, yeah. They're all potential guitar players. They, maybe they're just starting out. Maybe they have a cousin or a brother or a husband or a son or a daughter that play guitar. Um, you know, and, and, and the thing about bootlegger also is not as, only as a quality guitar made with quality parts, it's extremely price efficient. Yeah. Um, you know, I tell people how much it costs. They're already, they're automatically skeptical. That it's a piece of crap. And, yeah, I get and, that. which is unfortunate, you know, <laughs> cause it, yeah. it is, it's anything, but I mean, it's a super well-made quality, great sounding guitar and comes with hard case. And the case and, is and it comes with a nominally blast, nice. It's a deluxe case. It's not a crappy case. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's a gorgeous case. And you know, yeah. the thing that I, that I, if I want to impart anything tonight, is that bootlegger is a community. Yes. You know, it really is. You know, you go to the website. I'm, I'm honored to be on it. <laughs> you know, um, Scott deep colorized my guitar and black and white in me. You know, I feel like a fake rock star on it, which is fine. Um, <laughs> but it's a community because what I love about bootlegger is, you know, you listen to Chuck. He's putting quality, creativity, and originality into every guitar he builds. Mm -hmm. And for people who are appreciative of those three things. You know, I, again, I, this is a used guitar. I didn't buy this from Chuck, you know, um, but I, I, I love quality and I love originality. Um, and of course, tone, that's my favorite thing. But, you know, like the, the page, that's when you and I both talked at the same time, Scott, we were literally about to say the same thing, which is that that page that you guys have created together. Um, how do people find the bootlegger page? Uh, you, you just search for bootlegger guitar and they should all come up. Okay, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's like a, is it called a fan page or a fan group? What is it? Yeah. It, one, the, the group is, it says uh, fan page. Or yeah, fan and, group. It, it, it's, it's really nice. And, and I love the smallness of it. I mean, here, here's the best example uh, of how accessible Chuck is. Anyone listening to us, when's the last time you bought a guitar, enjoyed the guitar and thought, I'll call the owner of the company and become that person's <laughs> friend. And yet look at the three of us on right now, because that's exactly what happened. Well, he get, he get every guitar you send out, right? Chuck, or, um, maybe everyone, maybe, maybe not everyone. I, I don't know, but I, it looks as though as every time you have a sale or a product going out, um, you sit down, you do your little quality control video. Yeah, well, my goal is every time um, I, I do feel at that sometimes just for life reasons. Mm -hmm. Life gets uh, in the way. I got to get a guitar out. But I mean, I QC every guitar and I do my best to try to do a little video and send it out. So that is my goal. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't like, I, I'm not good at trying to figure out why. Um, I've had people say the same thing to me that my guitars cannot be high quality because they're not expensive enough. And I acknowledge that that's how some people feel, but I have a hard time really understanding it and responding to it or dealing with it. So I just keep doing what I'm doing and I can't I, like spend I've, time on it. I've literally gotten the same thing today with like uh, on my website, guitarmasis.com. Somebody goes, it's a scam. It's a scam. Where, where is that coming from? Why, why do you that's a good that? sign. If it's so good <laughs> that people don't believe it, that's a good sign. But here's my response to that. Put your fucking hands on one of these things because you feel the quality. Like I, I'm, I'm an average. So I, I'm that part of your, your audience, your demographic. I'm not a professional guitar player. I'm a very, very amateur guitar player. But I, I, I enjoy playing and I enjoy the instrument. 
I hate bad quality and I enjoy and appreciate good quality. And that's what, that's why I called you that day. Yeah. Cause I couldn't believe I got this guitar for whatever I paid for used. And yeah. it wasn't horrific as a price new because, because I looked it up before and after well, I bought it. Here's how I would explain it. It's called marketing. I don't spend a lot of money trying to compete with these big guitar companies because it would be impossible. Mm -hmm. So I figured a while back, you know, the best marketing is just to get my guitars out in the player's hands. Mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. And the best way to do that is to say, okay, you know, there, I mean, to me, $700 is a chunk of change. So I'm not going to say, I mean, I realize compared to a $3,000 guitar, 700 sounds pretty attractive, but I've never lost fact that five to $700 is still a chunk of money right. mm -hmm. for people. Right. Yeah. So um, I believed and I feel that by selling guitars, getting them out there at a price that you know, hopefully more people can afford them, that is my marketing. And then they start talking about it. And with social media, I believe that's why Bootlegger grows every year. Uh, it, it, you've got to be right. And, and let me say this um, you've got other things going on. I want to talk a little more about the amp before we're done. But what other projects do you have coming up? We're introducing uh, two new pedals, uh, both a drive and a distortion that are both 12 AT7 troop driven, which turns me on because I love everything too, right? Analog. So those are coming out. Um, I have some surprises coming out with new models off of my old designs, like taking some of my solid bodies and making them semi hollow. Hmm. Just to like, continue. Like that bad boy back there, right? Right. Well, the single barrel will remain the single barrel forever, except okay. for, yeah, the three by three. That guitar will remain that guitar as long as I am bootlegger guitar, because okay. that is irreplaceable. Oh, that, I, I'm in love my with other, that guitar. Yeah, some of my other solid bodies. Well, for example, the rye, the black rye, very successful by making a version of it that's semi-hollow body with the Bixby. So we're just coming out, you know, we're coming out with things, trying to offer a little bit more variety with our styles. And, and there really is a, a guitar for everybody up there. And I encourage everybody to either go to bootlegger guitars, uh, guitar, right? Not guitars. Yeah, guitar. Boot, bootleggerguitar.com and have a look at the, the lineup and the stories and the players and the pictures. I mean, it's quality from the tuners, the Grove tuners, right up to the to the Diodario strings that go on the guitar right before yeah. the ship. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they are not skimping. Trust me when I tell no, you, and I this? played what's thousands that? of guitars and it this is, thing is amazing. They're, Thank they're you. Gorgeous. They're absolutely gorgeous. The sky, you know how, and also, you know how my gives... team came together with the name bootlegger guitar? Yeah, how? I, I hired, you know, a, 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 a talk group of 20 people, you know, brilliant, bright minds mm -hmm. that were all in my head drinking whiskey late at night while I'm on my, <laughs> my computer. And I checked, I was just curious. I wonder if the word bootlegger is available for a guitar company. So I, then I checked bootlegger guitar and lo and behold, no one was using it. No, nothing so, came well, up. Well, that, <laughs> yeah, by the my way, brilliant you... focus group of 20 people in my brain and whiskey said, oh, <laughs> I can buy bootleggerguitar.com for 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. well, guitar so Tales, the very, the very show we're on right now, I wrote down about 10 or 15 names, and I came up with Guitar Tales, and that was available. Same exact yeah, thing. Just, it was just an name. available name. My dear friend Pat Mullen came up with the word hmm. Guitar Assist. Yeah, and, uh, you know, many, many years later when the internet started getting hot, you know, I, I say, maybe I should trademark that as a goof. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, it was available. <laughs> I bought the yeah. .com yeah, and man. sat on it all these years. And, and just this year now, I made guitarmasses.com. That's funny. Right, now, uh, Scott, if people want to take a look at the bootlegger guitars on your site, is it guitarmasses or guitarmasses? Guitarmasses.com. Okay. Yeah, they're all there. There's there's actually, um, uh, we have a special spot just for bootlegger stuff Perfect. with some with some videos and you know, uh, my, my review of this very guitar right here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That was a good review you did. So I could hang with you guys and talk all night. We, uh, we generally try to limit our Zoom shows to about a half hour. I have no idea how long we've been going. I do know that I'm three glasses. 43, so 43 minutes and 28 seconds. 
there you go. It, it flies. <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm gonna keep and going. In California time, that's like nine hours. It is. It is. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, yeah. before we wrap up, let's do a toast. And by the way, you got your bottom bean. I know you're an endorsement. Yeah, I just started. I know. I'm drinking coffee. I'm all shaky. Oh, that's right. You got an endorsement. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Let's do a toast. Wait, wait. Right up to the camera. Yeah. I did a video with my buddy Mark Fichette uh, when we introduced the 1530 amp, and uh, we were drinking whiskey out of sake cups. I got oh, so nice. Of that. <laughs> I still have people today giving me, I, I love it. You know, I, Oh, it's good Bye, guys. Stuff. Cheers. This is fabulous. Cheers. Cheers, man. Ah. All, right. All right. So look for the uh, the new uh, pages on Facebook and the group on Facebook. Just search for Bootlegger Guitar or Bootlegger. Hey, thanks Guitars. for the help on it. I appreciate it. Yeah, no oh, problem, absolutely. Man. You guys have a great night, and we will see you with more great shows on Guitar Tales. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you.